Welcome to the Trip Tales podcast with me, Kelsey Graves. Let's jump into a new episode exploring a vacation destination that you'll want all the details about. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Trip Tales. Today I'm going to share about my family of five's trip to the Tennessee State Park, Fall Creek Falls. Specifically about staying in the beautiful renovated lodge there and all the fun we got into when we visited. This is going to be a solo episode with yours truly. I definitely prefer to have a guest on Trip Tales, if possible, to share another perspective about a trip or a destination, but I put a call out on my Instagram a few times for a Fall Creek Falls episode and no one bit, so a solo episode it is. Speaking of Instagram, be sure to follow along there. My handle is at Kelsey underscore Graves, just my name with an underscore. To find out what upcoming Trip Tales episodes are dropping or what episodes I might need a guest for. And the goal of Trip Tales is simply to have two real people discuss a real trip so that others who are thinking about planning a similar trip can listen in and wrap their head around how to get there, where to stay, maybe where not to stay, best restaurants, activities, excursions, etc. I've been receiving a lot of great feedback that previous Trip Tales episodes have already helped people plan trips or have motivated them to start planning a trip that they were inspired by from an episode. So we're going to keep them coming. And if you have a trip that you've taken over the last few years that you think other travel lovers would love to hear about, please email me at triptalespodcast at gmail.com and I will get you on the schedule. Okay, on to Fall Creek Falls. I first want to say that even if you don't live in Tennessee or the Southeast, when we were at Fall Creek Falls, we met people from all over the country, as far as California. One group we chatted with were there for a big family reunion, and they were from all over the country. So this could be a fun destination regardless of where you live. Another thing to note, a couple years ago, Tennessee State Parks completely renovated or built brand new lodges at four state parks. And these aren't just any state park lodges. They are like beautiful hotels with restaurants, pools, like a resort quality hotel within a state park. It's pretty special and worth checking out. So my family of five visited Fall Creek Falls State Park in July, 2023. And summer was a fabulous time to go because it's so fun to cool off in the falls. On this trip, it was my husband and I and our three kids, whose ages at the time were 11, 8, and 5. Fall Creek Falls is located in Spencer, Tennessee, which is about a two-hour drive southeast from Nashville, which is where we live, so just a quick two-hour drive, a two-hour drive from Knoxville, and a three-hour drive from Atlanta. Fall Creek Falls is one of Tennessee's largest and most visited state parks, so it's definitely a popular one. It encompasses almost 30,000 acres of cascades, gorges, waterfalls, and streams. The actual waterfall, Fall Creek Falls is its name, is one of the highest waterfalls in the eastern United States. Other waterfalls within the park include Piney Falls, Cane Creek Falls, and the Cane Creek Cascades, which are so fun to play in. So Fall Creek Falls has 30 cabins. 222 campsites, and the brand new 85-room lodge at Fall Creek Falls, which is what we stayed in. So after driving from Nashville through the countryside and through some woods, we finally pulled up to the lodge at Fall Creek Falls in July at sunset, and it was breathtaking. I have a highlight reel on my Instagram if you would like to go see and get a feel for it. It's this beautiful, modern, industrial chic lodge right in the middle of this state park, surrounded by woods and waterfalls. I really can't explain how new and beautiful this lodge is. You walk in and it has a huge lobby with high ceilings, a modern feel, tons of tables and seating for games or visiting with your family, nice furniture, black and white plaid pillows, a delicious restaurant and a room full of books and board games. In general, it's just very clean and nice. We stayed in a double queen room with bunk beds. That means we had two queen beds plus a separate bunk room with twin bunk beds and a second TV, which kids always love. 
They also have these types of rooms in a king. So you could get a king bed with the bunk room, which would be great for a family of four. My husband and I slept in one of the queens. My oldest slept in the other queen and the two youngers each had a bunk. It was perfect for a family of five. I really can't speak highly enough of how clean, spacious, and comfortable this room was. We even brought our senior yellow lab with us. Most Tennessee state parks and lodges are extremely dog-friendly. You just have to make sure you let them know ahead of time and book a pet-friendly room. Our room was on the ground floor and had a sliding door and patio with a table and two chairs and a very peaceful view of Fall Creek Falls Lake. We were on the ground level, like I said, so that was very helpful for us to just slide open that slider door and take our dog out when needed. So night one, we got there around sunset, we settled into our room, and then we hit up the Lodge restaurant, which is so convenient and good. Then later that night, we went out to the Lodge's fire pits, which are always going to make s'mores. At state parks, we always bring our own s'more stuff, so I brought graham crackers, marshmallows, Hershey bars, and even the roasting sticks. I'll link to the packable ones we like in the show notes. I'm sure we could have gone around and found this stuff to purchase at the lodge somewhere, but it's just so nice to have it on hand and not have to go hunting. So after s'mores, we popped back in the lobby, and one fun thing about this lodge is that the lobby is hopping at night. There are so many families and large groups gathered around tables playing cards, games, telling stories, sharing snacks and drinks. We found a spot and started playing a game of heads up on my phone just so we could spend some time in this super fun lobby and be around all the energy. Then it was time for bed. Another thing about this lodge is that it's so pretty at night. If you walk down to the water and look back up at this lodge, it is all lit up with strands of Edison lights on the restaurant patio, and it's just a very magical view. So we got a great sleep in our spacious, comfortable room. Beds were super comfortable. And then in the morning, all of the Tennessee State Park lodges have a complimentary continental breakfast. So this was surged in the lodge restaurant, And it had cereals, pastries, Belgian waffle maker, yogurts, fruit, hard-boiled eggs, juices, and coffee. So we all fueled up at the restaurant, and then we set off on our first full day to explore Fall Creek Falls. I will say you kind of have to drive around Fall Creek Falls. It is quite large, so you definitely want a car to be able to get from point A to point B. So we were headed to the visitor center to get some maps and some hiking recommendations when we passed a kind of dammed up watering hole, which we figured out was called George Hole. Others were already stopped there, setting up their picnic spots for the day. So we just pulled over and got out and started exploring before we even hit the visitor center. We all were wading through the waters and exploring the little babbling brooks. It was so sweet and simple, but such a beautiful and peaceful place to start our day. So after that, we got back in our car and finally made our way over to the visitor center, which has a bunch of information and a lot to do right there. So I would start your day at the visitor center, right in the same area after you get your maps and talk to some park rangers for some hiking recommendations. There's an overlook lookout point that has some gorgeous falls right there and a fun suspension bridge that crosses them. It is quite long and quite wobbly and definitely a thrill. My entire family enjoyed it and I highly recommend doing the suspension bridge. And then right from the same spot, you can walk down a bunch of steps to play in the Cascades. I highly recommend this. We did not play long enough in these Cascades day one. We hit it up again, day two, but show up in your swimsuits and water shoes. Anywhere you go in this park, I would just wear a swimsuit covered in, you know, some sort of cover-up clothing and water shoes because there are so many places to play. You can play for hours in these natural cascades. There's natural rock water slides. Um, You can walk right up to the falls and kind of put your hands in them or sit under them. So there's a lot to do in this first stop. There's also a small little playground, which my littlest hit up. This is a fun fact. Disney's live action Jungle Book film was filmed at the state park right in this area at these Cascades. I highly recommend watching that and then getting a feel for the park. 
So after exploring the first area, we headed over to the main event, which is Fall Creek Falls. And we had to drive between the two. Just again, you have to keep hopping in your car. When you park at Fall Creek Falls, you walk up to an overlook of Fall Creek Falls, which is gorgeous. This is a great place to get a video or a photo of your family. And just off the overlook area is the Fall Creek Falls hike. It's only 0.4 miles, so less than half a mile, but it is strenuous. And there is a sign right there that says, very strenuous. There's lots of rocks and slightly treacherous path, some bouldering, um, like when you need to use your hands and feet to kind of get up and down some big rocks, but all my kids did it. Um, like I said, at the time, they were five, seven or eight, and 11. Even the five-year-old did fine. Now, I would take into account their personality, so I would say this hike is for four or five-year-olds plus. It's short, so you can get it done, but it is strenuous, but that kind of keeps the kids interested. They're like climbing up rocks and using their hands and feet. Um, you definitely could not bring a stroller on this hike, and I personally would not feel comfortable with having a baby in a carrier or a hiking pack just because of how rocky and unsteady it is, but that's just my personal opinion. Getting to the bottom is so worth it. It is absolutely stunning. Wear a swimsuit under your clothes, like I said, so that you can go swimming at the bottom. There were multiple dogs at the bottom of this hike that made this treacherous hike down, which is probably much easier for them. Swimming at the bottom, it was just so magical feeling. All my kids got in the water. Um, we didn't have swimsuits on, and I so wish we would. We just got it in our clothes, which you can also do. Um, but this was just a very magical moment that I will hold on to for a long time with my family swimming at the bottom of this beautiful waterfall. So after that hike and swimming and hiking out, which is quite tiring because you're going back up all of this treacherous rocks and bouldering, we were spent and we went back to the hotel restaurant for a delicious bur burger and adult beverage for mom and dad. There's also a bar off to the side of this restaurant that stays open a bit later, which is kind of fun. Another great thing about staying at the lodge is that after a strenuous hike or swimming in waterfalls, you can hit up your showers and your clean bathroom to get all freshened up for the restaurants or whatever your family wants to do later. So we settled in for another nice sleep, and the next day we explored a little bit more of Fall Creek Falls. The next day we came across a really cool area within the state park that has a huge swimming pool with a diving board and a small water slide, a kiddie pool, a snack shack. I think it's called the Village Snack Shack, which had hot dogs and burgers and pizza, ice cream, and there was a pretty substantial ropes course. So on their website, they say this is called the Canopy Challenge Course at Fall Creek Falls, which includes over 75 wobbly bridges, rope swings, cargo nets, balance beams, and zip lines of varying difficulty. This looked really cool, and we will definitely make sure we get tickets or reservations for this when we visit Fall Creek Falls again. Also, there's a golf course there, and the Fall Creek Falls Golf Course is another popular attraction. This beautiful and challenging 18-hole golf course is one of the best courses in Tennessee, and the Park Pro Shop provides golfing supplies, lessons, rental clubs, and golf carts. So I'm going to close this episode answering the same question I ask all of my guests, which is, if someone out there is considering this trip, what is it about Fall Creek Falls State Park that would make you say book it? This was such a sweet and magical two-night trip for our family. One of my favorite things in the world is being outdoors in a beautiful place with my family of five and just taking in the wonder of things like waterfalls and natural cascades together. And this is the perfect place to do it. I think sometimes we forget to book these simple trips because it's not like hiking waterfalls in Hawaii or planning a week-long national park itinerary. But there is so much beauty often right out your own back door. And the fact that you can get a gorgeous brand new lodge with spacious, comfortable, clean rooms and showers after a long day of hiking and playing in waterfalls, plus a nice restaurant and a bar, a pool, fire pits, a beautiful lobby for games and quality time with your family, all within a state park, it blows my mind. 
There is more info on their website and I'll link to the Fall Creek Falls website in the show notes where you can book this lodge or one of their cabins. But I promise you, you will be blown away by the Fall Creek Falls State Park. Okay, I've got a lot of great episodes coming up, including the new Conrad Orlando. Have you seen this place? It looks like you're in the Caribbean. There is so many overwater bungalows and beautiful crystal clear water. It's wild. Also upcoming is the JW Marriott Marco Island, which we love, an episode about Zion National Park, and so many more. So be sure to follow or subscribe to Trip Tales wherever you listen to podcasts so that you don't miss any upcoming destinations. And I will see you on the next episode. That wraps up another episode of Trip Tales. If you have a trip you'd like to share about on the podcast, email me at triptalespodcast at gmail.com and I'll add you to the schedule. Also, be sure to follow the show so that you don't miss any upcoming vacation destinations. And if you have an extra minute in your day, please leave a review for the podcast. It helps more than you could imagine. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next episode of Trip Tales.